What five things does a screenplay have to have to make you interested in being a producer for it? Five things a screenplay has to have to make me feel interested. For one, like I said, emotional response. Like, I need to know how I feel after I read it. If I feel like, what was I supposed to feel? Now you gotta go back to your drawing board. Um, so yes, uh, you have to know the, the feeling. The feeling needs to be there. Some, something, some type of feeling at the end of it. The other thing is a true identity in what genre it is. And if not, it's okay, because I can, I can do that, I can help with that. But if the person doesn't know what genre they're in, it's not that you have to play by the rules, but you need to know the rules before you break them. And they're telling me, oh, I just made this awesome horror film. And I'm like, this is hilarious. Like, <laughs> I just watched it. And horror and comedy can inter intertwine, but it's like, you're gonna break a rule here. Let me make sure this is what you meant by this. Like, so I, it needs to have a really strong identity in its genre. Um, another thing it needs to have is somebody that's either, I can't say rooting for, but someone that a mass audience, like most people can connect with. Um, we're in a time where, you know, people are a little bit more open to different things. So I think that's, that's something that we're kind of having to like test the, the thermometer on like, where are we as a culture? Like what is now accepted or whatever? But you have a good idea just from living life and watching the news, like what people accept or scroll through social media. <laughs> you could get an idea of how they connect with things and, um, uh, how they, they see things. So if, if I have no one in that film that I see myself in, there's a problem because I can see myself in a lot of ways. I'm very versatile. I don't think I'm like this person that has to only see this and only see that. So if I don't see something that I can connect with, we're, we're missing something. So a connection to a character doesn't have to be the main character, but a connection to a character in a way that brings a person in where like, okay, that could be my buddy. Yeah, I would say that too or whatever. If it's so far off and like overly avant-garde or artsy, I just need to be told then this is what that's supposed to be. And then, all right, great. You want to make it? Here's a little teeny budget. <laughs> and I'll help you get into some weird festivals. Like, you know, and they're like, no, I want this to be on every, you know, theater. And I'm like, well, we can't work together <laughs> because that's not going to work. So, yeah, as long as, as, long as it has um, someone to connect, connect to. And it actually, actually kind of brought me to the other point. Um, the first thing I ask a person before we, I even read their script is, where do you see this going? And that kind of tells me, and it's funny, because someone's always like, oh, I never thought of that. And I'm like, well, oh, no. you, know? <laughs> you have to know where you're going to know how to do it. You have to know where you're going to know where to move and where to focus on and where to face. So if they don't know where this, if they wanted to go, that's going to make my job a little harder. Now, I can read it and be like, ooh, this can do this. But at least let me know where you see it. And then when I'm reading it, I can kind of say, yeah, you got it or you don't. And are you fine with not having that? You would have this outcome. Are you good with that? Yeah, you know what I am, great. Or no, I'm not. Well, you're gonna have to go back to this, rewrite it, have much less location so we can get you a bigger star because this thing is not gonna sell. You know, like something like that. So um, yes, a, a good, I guess that would be direction, a good focus point of uh, where they want it to go. That helps me. And then I guess for number five, um, it has to be relevant to the immediate culture. That doesn't mean it needs to be happening, but just relevant. For instance, I think some movies that were so good that didn't do well, it was like, if they just waited a couple more years, it would have worked. Because we were moving to that, but this guy has a very strong opinion on it, this director or this writer or whatever. So if he's gonna come with his opinion, it's gonna kind of disconnect and people are not gonna spread it or uh, financiers are not gonna get down with it or, um, you know, the distributor won't readily just open the door. They'll probably throw it on Netflix somewhere and bury it or whatever. It's because they just, it was such a good project, such a good story, but it just wasn't time for it yet. And I think for producers, they have to be very mindful of that. Um, it's not just keeping up with current events. It's kind of just talking to people um, and making sure that you're in a very diverse group of people. I think every producer, if you're only talking to your buddies from school, it's a problem. <laughs> you need to talk to people from different backgrounds different financial backgrounds, different races, different ethnicity, everything. You need to expand your horizons, travel. When you go to, even if you just travel a state over, go to like, don't go to Applebee's. I mean, I love eating Applebee's. <laughs> but like, eat Applebee's when you're home. But if you're in another place, go to like the little mom and pop and just kind of sit at a diner and talk to some people. Because I'm thinking, wow, this is such a great idea. I go to Montana, these people will never watch this. 
So it's okay if that's not, but I got to keep that in mind. So if I'm not, I have no idea what's going on. I think like even with the political culture right now, people are like, I didn't know people thought like this. I'm like, I did. I toured all the country doing merchandise events. Like, I believe me, this is nothing new. But it's like, that's necessary. When you're the person, a producer, that is, is in a position to choose what stories are made or choose which stories you're going to push through or find financing for, choose the right ones for the time and tell the person if it's not ready, they might fight you on it. You might lose the project and they might do it anyway. And then you'll see that they... You were right. <laughs> but if you communicate in a way, the person can get down with it. And then for writers, just know like while you're writing, let yourself run free, but also be aware of what's happening around you. And that doesn't mean your idea can't happen. You just might need to adjust it. So it's like the little, you know, like sugar with the medicine type of thing, like a little bit of sugar. Just add a little sugar in it. So it's a little bit more palatable for where we're at. That way we can spread it to the world and everyone can see your art. But if you're staying in this space and you're futuristic and you have this whole idea of where we're going, like, okay, let's, now we gotta add a more budget and make it futuristic then. It can't be now because we're not there yet or whatever. So yeah, being very mindful of what's happening, what the culture is and seeing when I'm reading that script, can someone accept this as truth right now? And you, there'll always be a couple no's and you gotta know who those no's are. But if it's mostly yeses, all right, we can now move forward. Do you also go to movie theaters in other in, in your travels to, in towns where the industry is not prevalent or it's not a big city, and this is like the main focus of the town? Like, there's nothing else to do here. I do. I go to a lot of movies that in a town where there is nothing else to do but movies, and I mean nothing. Like in the middle of nowhere, um, and it's very interesting um, their take on things. And I like, especially in those areas, right after the film, those people talk the most. They will give you the ins and outs. And I learned this by seeing it, but I also learned it from somebody that we don't like to talk about right now, but Harvey Weinstein. He established something where he would put in a strip mall, a random in the middle of Jersey where nobody goes anywhere but the movies and to like the club, like and the club is a pub, right? <laughs> like he put, he would use that theater as his litmus test. So he would put it forth for an audience. There would be not, nobody else around and he would just have them judge it. And he would literally stop production or not go forward because of that little weird little town. And if Harvey Weinstein, as horrible as his integrity is, but the man was genius when it came to business and how things work and how to get things made and sold, things that weren't necessarily the most popular thing, if he can do that, I can at least go sit in a the theater and watch how the audience reacts to it, even though they're not the people that we're talking to the most. Because they're gonna give you some information you'll never heard about. I've sat in a, uh, a movie theater just recently in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is like the middle of nowhere. But also I went, um, it was somewhere in uh, Tennessee, and I can't remember the, the area, but um, these people, they'll stay outside the movie theater for an hour. You don't get that in a city. They're like, oh, it was nice, and they're out. You, so you don't really get as much talking. Even in indie, in indie theaters in a city, they, they leave much quicker. But I'm saying, I was just sitting there with my popcorn, just listening to them talk. <laughs> and Scott does this, uh, uh, the director I work with, he actually goes and talks to them and asks them questions. And he brings me back information that I didn't hear before because his questions kind of sparked it. So everyone in, like, in my team, uh, my production company, the Audacity, we kind of have that mentality like, hey, go to the movies, please. Like my, my goal eventually is to make, make sure everyone on my, on my staff has an uh, AMC A-list. Like you can go see three movies a week without worrying about the cost. Like it's like, you know, these companies have gym memberships that they give to their employees. I want to give you it. Here, go watch movies. That's something I want to do. So I encourage them to go to the movies, take time off to do that because it's necessary. But also don't just leave after. Stay for the credits, of course, we respect our industry. But then also listen, stay in, in the lobby a little bit, see what people are saying, because that teaches us far more than film school. An audience teaches us, because that's, that's what we're here for. We are, we're here for the audience. So how can you really communicate to an audience with this idea that you have a, a vision, but you, you've never really heard an audience respond to something that you know what you thought the response would be? Let's hear them out, no matter how obscure their area is, no matter how city they are, how cool they are. Like those guys that wear like the mom jeans, those are the guys you wanna hear respond about your little indie. Like that's the guy who's gonna tell you some truth. So yeah, listen to him too. Everyone, listen to everyone. <laughs> I don't even know where to scream from the mom team. No, no. <laughs>